This time I'd like to call to order the Monday, October 5th meeting of the Curry Tuck County Board of Commissioners at 4 p.m. We had a work session with the Historic Preservation Committee that is uh, bringing forth recommendations on preservation of historic structures in Curry Tuck County. At this time, I'd like to recognize Reverend Keith Ham from Powell's Point Christian Church to lead us in the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful for the opportunity to come to you in prayer at this time. I thank you for these leaders. I ask, Lord, that you would bless them, give them wisdom, guidance, and direction, that they might help the people of this county. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ham. Have a good evening. Thank Next item is approval of agenda. I would like to remove the report from Ms. Janet Rose about North Carolina Fisheries Commission. She could not make it tonight and has been rescheduled for the first meeting in November. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Have a motion for second. approval. Just a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is public hearings. Public hearing in action on Albemarle Regional Waste. Albemarle Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan, Curry Tuck County requests adoption of the Albemarle Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan to promote the public health, safety, and general welfare of the county citizenry and to mitigate the impact of identified hazardous risk. Would that be you, Mr. Scanlon? I'll take that, Mr. Chairman. At your last meeting, uh, Mary Beth Noons, our emergency management director, presented the regional Albemarle Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan to the board as part of the... Um, CRS requirement for adoption, uh, you are required to have a public hearing. Ten days after the public hearing, you can are in a position then to take under consideration the resolution that's in the agenda package. Uh, so again, a part of that process is tonight is to actually have a public hearing. Okay, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Scanlon? I guess for clarification purposes, are you saying after we hold the public hearing tonight, we can adopt it or at the no, next meeting? No, sir, you'll have to wait ten days. So it's actually a three-meeting process? Yes, sir. Okay. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to speak to this agenda item that did not sign up? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. And we will schedule this for a future uh, meeting for, for your For adoption for, for at the action. next board meeting. Yes, sir. All right. Next agenda item is public hearing and action on Curry Tuck County Comprehensive Transportation Plan. I believe that would be you again. Um, I certainly will take that. We have with us tonight uh, Angela Welch, with his, which is our RPO representative, and she has Nadi with NCDOT. I think they're actually going to present this item. Uh, the, the staff has been working with uh, both the RPO and NCDOT uh, in a proposed road amendment or addition to our, our Comprehensive Transportation Plan. And with that, they will come up and present the, the amendment. All right. Uh, <coughs> since you're our company tonight, we'd I like to ask you to introduce yourself for everyone, and then the floor is yours. My name's Nazia Sarger. I'm with. Ma'am. Yes. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, they. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they can still see you on the screen. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nazia Sarger, and I'm with NCDOT's Transportation Planning Branch. I'm Lee Cowhagen. I'm with the Transportation Planning Branch. My name is Angela Welsh. I'm the Almar RPA Director. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. And um, what we're going to talk about today is the Currituck County Comprehensive Transportation Plan. Um, the purpose of today's presentation is to adopt the amendment to the Currituck County Transportation Plan. Um, the original um, CTP, Comprehensive Transportation Plan, was adopted back in 2011. Um, the multimodal maps were adopted, and I'm sure probably many people here were the ones that adopted these plans. Um, the only changes that we made 
from April to now of this year or recommendations to the highway and bicycle maps. And what we're seeking today is resolution for the adoption of the amendment. So what is a comprehensive transportation plan? I'm sure many of you know that it's a 30-year long-range transportation plan. Um, it includes with it multimodal maps. And really what it is is a vision for the county in regards to transportation for highway, transit, rail, um, bike, and pedestrian. Um, it's not fiscally constrained. However, it's required for it's required to have recommendations for transportation for funding from NCDOT. Um, we look at local land use plans um, and the CTP shows current and future conditions. And we'll move on to the next slide. So again, today, as I mentioned before, the only changes that we made were to the highway map and the bicycle map. And this came from, um, this was a request made by the county. Um, to go ahead and update these maps and to have an amendment to the CTP. This is what an adoption sheet looks like. This is what, you know, when you submit your resolution, if you adopt today, um, the date and the adoption will go onto this map. Um, the Albemarle RPO will endorse the map. The Transportation Planning Branch at NCDOT will recommend the map and the NCDOT Board of Transportation will adopt all these maps. And this is, you know, this is the entire highway map for Curta County and all these recommendations were made back in 2011. And the only, um, did we add? Inset? It's not here. Okay. Um, the only addition that we made, and I know it's very small, but if you look to the north um, west of the map, there's an inset that you'll see there. And the only recommendation that we're making, yeah, right there, is the east west connector um, recommendation. And when we made this recommendation, we had to realign the 168 bypass. That's a recommendation because, due to design standards. Um, when you have two major highways like that, it can't um, intersect in one area. So we had to kind of realign it. And of course, that isn't funded yet. That's also a vision. But we went back and forth with Curta County a little bit, and we decided that this was the best alternative for the east-west connector to be a boulevard. This is the public transportation map, and it hasn't changed. It's untouched. The bicycle map, the only additions that we made to it were bicycle, um, bicycle pads from the Albemarle Regional Bike Plan that were adopted by all 10 counties, I think back in 2013. So just to make sure that, you know, it's all there together. This is the pedestrian map. Again, it wasn't touched. It's remained the same. Um, so I guess the next question is what happens after um, you adopt today? As mentioned before, the only thing that is gonna happen from here on out is we're going to recommend it at the Transportation Planning Branch. Um, Angela and the RPO, they're going to endorse it, and DOT will adopt it. Um, and another thing i like to mention is that you will get a chance to review the amendment in its entirety before um, we close out the plan. Here's my contact, Lee's contact, and Angela's contact. If you need, um, if you need this information, please let me know after the meeting. And is there any questions? Any board members have questions? I guess I, the, the process after we adopt it and it gets to the RPO, and I guess the RPO would adopt it, then it goes into the state pot of projects, and then it works its way from a scoring. Uh, Go ahead. It would have to be scored, and then it works its way 
like every other project does, correct? That's correct. And even though it hasn't been adopted by you yet, um, Kurtuck and Camden County, Camden County has um, another section of it in Camden County. They've requested that they be put into the scoring process, so it's already in there. It's already been out for public comment, I believe. Public comment closes the 15th. We haven't had any comments, so it's already in there. Okay. And it'll go through the process, the scoring process, and then we'll know December of 20, uh, 2016 what projects will get funded. However, that's <laughs> funding for the last process when the mid Kurtuck Bridge got funded. That was funding for five years. So we're looking out five years or six years. If this does get, does get funded, the soonest it would be is six years. That's, okay. That's, that's the important thing to remember. We're talking, this is five years out. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, <laughs> quick question. The um, in, on inset A, we have a much better version in, in our thing than that. Um, where is that coming? To, where is that going to intersect 168 right now? I mean, do you know like which store, which like the area, the um, east-west connector is what you're talking right. about? Yeah, like where it comes in. The, 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 I, I don't believe the exact literal route at this time is determined it will be based upon engineering environmental study okay. you know, once it progresses uh, right now we just wanted to get a representation okay. roughly of where it would be because it looks like welcome to north carolina and here's the east west connector i mean it's cheated way way far north i whatever i guess my question is how sellable is that vice um like balahack road which is not significantly further to the north uh, a, a lot of a lot of the the east west piece of it i think and dan you can correct me and angela is is uh, a lot of it is looking at economic development in the northeastern region okay and and so well, i know some of the things we well, talked it, it, it about it ties into the the kimley horn study area okay is, is where we're talking okay. about connecting to 17. yeah there, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of jockeying i'm sure for position as to where it does go well, it's all said and done, depending on the counties that are involved. And yes, sir. I think what everybody needs to remember is with the governor, governor's bond initiative, trying to get Highway 17 upgraded to an interstate, this is mightily, mightily important for Curry Tuck and Camden. Yes. And the details would be worked out, but the concept is what we're after. And if I can add to... Um, these are just lines on the map right now, but when it gets down to when it gets funded is when it starts going into the environmental planning and all that. The public does have a chance to comment. Um, the DOT doesn't come in and say, this is where we're putting the road. They'll say this is the best location, and then there's a lot of public comment, public workshops, and things right. like that. But that doesn't start until the project's actually funded. Okay. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And what I'll add to that, too, is just like everybody said, there's that there's the governor's 25 year plan that he has right now, which is to upgrade um, 17 to an interstate. Um, not only that, but I believe what I got from the locals is that um, there's a there's possibility of commercial and industrial development that is expected in the Moyoc area um, and they're opening an eco industrial park, I believe, as well in Camden. Camden, in Camden County. So with that and with um, the study that Kimley Horn is doing, all that combined, it just made sense to have the East-West Connector go through those areas where there will be development. That was the thought process behind this. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to open the public hearing. I had no one signed up. Is there anyone who wishes to speak that did not sign up? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask the board for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, County Comprehensive Transportation Plan as presented. I I'll second, second that. that. I have a motion for approval, a second. Any further discussion? Second. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and we thank you so very much for coming out tonight. Thank you. I assume you drove from Raleigh. Thank you. They are now headed to Camden to do the to same do presentation the same to the Camden Board of Commissioners. Okay. That they, they will be leaving us. Next item, old business, consideration and action on PB 1513, <clears throat> Currituck County Solar Arrays, 
request to amend the Unified Development Ordinance Chapter 4 use standards to implement standards for solar array setbacks, groundwater testing, and performance guarantees. I believe this will be our third or fourth hearing of this, so I hope we're prepared to move forward. So with that, I will ask the board if anyone is prepared to make a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. I move that the uh, change to the UDO as provided by staff uh, as written um, with the exception of uh, like the change in paragraph G, the setback to 300 feet, which would be in keeping of uh, what was done in Moyoc as and the performance guarantee, I believe I would like to see us adopt the two year um, reevaluation of the restoration uh, funding and signed off by the engineer as staff had recommended. So that's a 115% minus salvageable. Negative. I'm well, sorry. Oh, yes. Minus right. the salvageable Correct. to be reassessed every two years. Correct. And you are asking for the 300 foot setback. Correct. And that is your motion. That is my motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No? No. 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 I believe motion carries four to three. Is that correct? Okay. I guess. Let me just do a quick hand if you voted yay for the motion. Okay, it's four to three. All right, thank you. New business. Resolution authorizing the upset bid process for the sale of county-owned property located in Albemarle Sound Beach Estates, and that's in Jarvisburg. Would that be Mr. McCree? Uh, I, I can present that. Um, this, this is the first step when the county uh, seeks to dispose of real property that it owns. These properties identified in the resolution are properties that over the years the county has acquired through tax foreclosure uh, due to the uh, property owners failing to pay property tax. Um, this resolution now that we've received an offer uh, from a prospective buyer, if you adopt this, will set into place a period in which any other interested parties in acquiring these properties may submit an upset bid. Uh, if an upset bid is presented, then we will continue going through that process until such time as we have no further bidders. Uh, and then a final resolution will be brought to the Board of Commissioners for you to uh, adopt for entry of an agreement with the final bidder for acquisition of these properties. All right. Questions for Mr. McCree? Mr. McCree, these sections, what size are they and what is the tax value? I see they're being sold for $1,600 a piece. Yes, the, the, these are non-conforming lots in Albemarle Sound Beach at the south end of the county. Um, that they are not of, of a size individually that they can be built upon. Uh, so what has happened over the years is the county has acquired a number of these lots through uh, tax foreclosures. Uh, it, it typically is an adjacent property owner who over time tries to piece together a larger piece of property and, and create a lot that will meet the county's minimum lot size and allow for them to actually build a, either a structure in Albemarle Sound Beach or to add on to a, a, a uh, existing structure. So the, 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 these values are in line with what has historically been the value uh, 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 offered by persons seeking to acquire these lots and what the county has typically ended up selling these lots for. And what we're doing tonight is establishing someone can come in and, and, and start, start an upset money. bid process for, that's ten, correct. for 10 days. Yes. After tonight. Yes. Any further questions? So this allows someone else to come up and offer a higher bid. Correct. For 10 days. Starts the bidding process. <clears throat> That's correct. And then after someone offers a higher bid, it goes for another 10 days, that, correct? That's correct. And then that process then will some... continue until such time as there are no further bids. Right. Well, yes. What's the alternative to this? The, the alternative is that the county... Uh, continues to, to maintain ownership of these lots. They, okay. do not, they do not go on the tax roll and are not generating any 
Got it. tax revenue. Got it. I, I didn't know if there was any other bid process. That there, 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 well, there are other methods by which the county can sell property. We could also do an auction process. Um, this is just one of many ways. This is one of this is one of several statutory ways that a county may dispose of real property. Okay. How is this plan on being advertised, if it, if at all? It will be. I think it calls for being advertised. Yes, uh, the clerk to the board commissioner shall cause notice of the proposed sale to be published. Should be published in a newspaper. Okay. All right. Any further questions? And real quick, is it to be understood that all of the properties? are part of the bidding process I, in other words yes to upset this bid you'd have to bid sixteen hundred and fifty dollars per parcel that, that would be, the, for that all would the, be the intention because what we okay. now have received is is an offer from one individual to acquire all these lots for the stated price okay any further questions hearing none this, this is just one more thing this is all county owned property as we speak it's not hurting anybody taking anything no, away all, from anybody again all these lots have, uh, are owned by the county acquired through tax foreclosures okay anyone else hearing none we need a motion to adopt or not adopt i move to adopt the resolution uh authorizing the county for the disposal of real property pursuant to the north carolina general statute 160 alpha tac 269 all right. I'll second that motion. I have a motion a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next is board appointments. Let's see what we have here. Tourism Advisory Board, that's Ms. Gilbert. And I'd like to reappoint Janice Farr um, as my appointment for the Tourism Advisory Board. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is the library board. Mr. Griggs and Ms. Gilbert both have a, an appointment. Mr. Chairman, I'll need to defer um, my appointment till the next meeting. Um, the person I had slated to appoint um, is not eligible to serve on that board. Okay. I would move to reappoint Deborah Mountain on the library board. She's eligible for reappointment, I believe. All right, everyone in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is Economic Development Board. Um, I'm going to reappoint Sam Miller. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Keith Hall can be re reappointed. He's a consensus appointment. Um, so move. Okay, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Then Roger Lamberson, I believe he had to resign from the board for personal reasons. So we need to appoint someone in his stead. Oh. He rescinded his resignation. He rescinded so he his wishes to continue to serve. Yes, and he also voiced that to me. Okay. Roger, Roger, Roger Lamberson. He did. Well, I'm satisfied with him rescinding. Is everyone else? Good with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next is Whalehead Preservation Trust. We have a consensus appointment or reappointment. We have Sharon Twitties is eligible for appointment. I move that we uh, reappoint Sharon. We have a motion to reappoint. Do we have a second? Well. I'll second. Now you can discuss it. Let's say we had four other people that had put in, and uh, I don't believe we've had the opportunity to discuss it with uh, amongst ourselves. And, unless I see here four names, and uh, unless I'm told to the contrary, I don't know if we've had an opportunity as a board to discuss amongst ourselves relative to the consensus. For that appointment and, and and I would agree with uh, Commissioner Griggs um, we, we always like to interview and have the opportunity to talk for some new individuals in these boards so we don't keep going on and on and on with the same individuals it's, it's good to to see if, if you know well so I mean I would like to spend a little more time on that if we could all right <coughs> we have a motion in a second unless the motion is withdrawn we're going to need to vote on it 
you like to withdraw your motion? I'm, I'm good with reappoint. Um, our consensus um, appointments um, were vetted with like real estate in mind, um, business, um, things like that. So I think that um, in that same context, if we're not going to go forward with reappointing Ms. Twitty is to, um, is, is to do some vetting on these other folks that have um, applied. Um, I, I would ask some comment from um, Mr. Griggs, since he serves on that board, um, any input or recommendations that you would have in this discussion um, before I rescind my um, motion to reappoint Ms. Twitty? I have only one specific. I can't speak to, do, to the other three, but as the board well knows, the mission for Wellhead uh, has been restated, and we're more focused now on a project to restore or complete the restoration of the historical boats and in moving forward with a project project that will uh, house them and further will hopefully extend to an interpretation of hunting lodges and the gun clubs and some of the mainland heritage consistent with the, with what the initial mandate was for the restoration of the wellhead club to begin with. To that end, one individual on here, Mike Doxey, was a member of, original member of the Wildlife Guild and is a native, has grown up here and has been, is a, another repository of significant historical knowledge both to the boats and to the hunting heritage here and would, at least in my opinion, provide significant assistance to going forward with the project that we have now focused on as a county and as a as the wellhead preservation trust board i cannot speak to the other three and that's why i mentioned that to my knowledge we have not had the opportunity to have a consensus now i could i i could What's maybe i'm wrong if, if there has been a consensus and and i'm not aware of it then uh, I can stand corrected. Well, hadn't some of these individuals just recently yep. put their application in? Two or three of them, I know mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with Mr. Griggs. I'm, uh, Mr. Doxey, matter of fact, he, he made mention today that, uh, of his retirement, that uh, uh, he would be interested in serving there. And uh, uh, as David alluded to, he certainly has a wealth of knowledge and background dealing with the the decoys boats and the, the, the those types of things that are now part of the historical trust mission. <clears throat> so anyhow, like the chairman said, there's a vote or a motion and a second unless Mr. Gilbert wants to rescind it and we'll I guess see where it goes from there. Um, hearing the recommendation from um, Mr. Griggs um, being on the Whalehead Trust, I would rescind my motion um, to reappoint Ms. Twitty and make a motion to appoint Mike Doxey. We have we a second it. So. For her to rescind the motion, does it take any further action, Mr. Wright? To be no, she, she can withdraw her motion. Okay. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I, I, just as a point of order, if I could. Again, it, that would not necessarily cure what I had proffered as the fact that we had not discussed the four. There's, there's more than one. I spoke specifically to Mike because I've talked with Mike. I've not talked with the other three. So I'm not in a position to speak again as to a consensus. So I, my point still stands as to whether or not we have a consensus appointment well, or we've had the opportunity to speak as a board of actually we have a motion that has not been seconded if it doesn't get a second then it will die and then you can okay have a consensus sure to um, to discuss it do we have a second okay miss gilbert we will continue this for lack of a second, to the next meeting to give everyone a chance to, to to discuss it. All right, I believe the Moyoc stormwater appointments was, were next, and this also requires the full board's approval. We have 
five individuals. I believe they came from people who expressed an interest when you held stormwater meetings in Moyoc. And I will open the floor to the board's discussion. Um, Mr. Chairman, I just have one question. Um, on the Mohawk Stormwater Service District um, Committee, are there other members that are currently on there, or is this making up a whole new committee? This would be a new slate of board members on a committee that the board has already created. Okay, so we have no previous members on the Stormwater District you, prior to. You you do this is a is a standing committee it, it hasn't met in several years but you do have a, a an existing committee and so this would be replacing those that committee with these names mr. chairman is it, is it would it be advantageous if we could get a copy of the existing membership as it sets today and and, and then to the, the continue meeting. this thing and 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 then take a look at what the recommendations are and then be prepared to do something at the next meeting yeah unless the board objects we'll just continue this to the next meeting give staff a chance to give us a list of the existing members would that, that, that be good advice. for yes, thank you, you miss gilbert and mr chairman um would it be appropriate to get the applicants the, you know the application that the applicants have provided as on a consensus appointments a absolutely it should be appropriate and, and it should be in the in the packet I think I didn't see it but that doesn't okay. it, it mean thing. if you could just provide the applications to us and the existing board members that have timed off is that what we want yes, yes. okay all right I believe uh, mr. Hall talked to me ahead of the meeting said he had a couple questions about uh, budget <coughs> amendments he wanted to ask before we approve the consent agenda there were two, uh, one being the maple bathrooms. Let me find that on here. Yes, sir, you, you, you have a budget amendment in your package tonight for a little over $19,000. Uh, the, the public bathrooms at the picnic shelter at Maple have been vandalized, uh, and the Board of Commissioners approved funding uh, at the end of last in the spring to repair those uh, that budget lapsed June 30th so this budget amendment is a request to carry those forwards that were approved in the spring to carry those forward into this fiscal year so this work can be undertaken but are we not when we do the runway extension that bathroom and that park area there will be very hard to get to or not as well traveled since we have replaced them with a new bathroom and a park area by the ball fields I mean, is this money well spent? This facility will remain after the airport project is done. The the uh, baseball fields, the the tot lot, the bathrooms, the picnic shelter will all remain after that project is completed. But will they have? Will anybody have access to it until this project, the runway extension, is completed, or will uh, it be? Yes, sir. It's at, it'd be accessed by the road that's in front of the um, COA Aviation, as you can now. That that road will come up. Uh, to this facility in to the general aviation building right? yes sir do we need two parks that close together will we be able, I mean uh, I will say this I was in those restrooms in the spring they either need to be fixed or closed oh, up and if we're going to have people out there on the facilities they need a restroom so if well you still have the ballpark you still have the playground and you cannot have a facility like that without a restroom there so it's better than that it's if we're not going to provide a bathroom there then that whole park needs to go away because the closest bathroom is all the way back at the ball fields and that's a mile ballpark uh, I don't think it'll be a mile but it, it's, it's certainly little kids are not going to go run to yeah, the restaurant it, it, it's certainly a long distance and uh, uh, sort of the, the thinking would be is that this I mean not only is this for public use this this baseball field softball field but it certainly can be there for practice for teams that if you had a tournament um, the teams that are getting ready to play can go into this area but it, it's it's going to remain active and uh, um, it's certainly our position that the bathrooms will still consider uh, to serve a, a, a good purpose for being there 
And the bathrooms will be open during the daytime, or they'll be only open when somebody's using the facility? Or They're open during the day now, and they will continue to remain open. And that's Monday through Sunday, or just? Uh... I, I believe it's seven days a week. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. The other question I have is uh, the whalehead budget. I just want to double check on that further down. Uh, that would be in your, as you said, is the TDA. If it is, is if it's whalehead funds it's under the budget amendment, I thought it was. Uh, well, that's 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 what we're. Um, the TDA would be asked to sit for you. I think you have two budget amendments. Okay. Yeah, so the second one would be in the TDA. Okay. That I'm good. Sufficient. Yeah. All right. Consent agenda. Make a motion for approval. I have a motion for approval. I'll second that. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Oppose, like sign. Motion carries. Commissioner's report, Mr. Beaumont. Um, I just want to come out and say personally, uh, I got to watch uh, Crawford's fire department respond uh, to my house. A couple lessons learned that I would recommend to everyone. Um, first of all, reiterate something that the fire department says year in and year out, and that's make sure you have fresh batteries in your uh, smoke alarm. Um, you know, I was uh, not awakened, but I was made aware of uh, building smoke in the upstairs of my house, uh, smoke alarm going off, and I uh, got to see just about every piece of fire apparatus Crawford has. And uh, But, you know, not knowing what they were going into, better to arrive with overgear than not enough gear. And a structure fire that far removed uh, would have been a significant issue. So, uh, again, I want to thank the Crawford Fire Department for their quick response. That's thank it. you. Mr. Hall. As we know, through the storm, everybody, we got very lucky. Uh, I saw firsthand where everybody was out getting water, batteries, and everything else for the storm, which is a great thing to see that people were taking it seriously. We've dodged another bullet. I did also get a chance to see the fire department in action. There was a house on Tolls Creek Road in Tolls Bay Colony that caught fire. They were able to take and get it under control. There was very minor damage to the house on either side, and yet they're very close. And you figure with the high winds, we we're very fortunate. Uh, there were no loss of life, human life. I'm not sure that I hear maybe a pet might have passed away. But thank you again to these firemen and these paramedics that are out there in our safety uh, law enforcement that were braving the elements with that wind and did such a fine job doing what they do best, keeping us safe and sleeping well at night. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Griggs. Uh, one thing, I guess, the uh, staff and myself, who I'm forgetting now, was it last Monday? Last Monday. Last Monday. Last Monday. Yeah, when you get old. The, uh, the, uh, a number of the staff uh, and myself were invited for a tour of the Coastal Science Institute. If you're not aware of that, it is in beautiful downtown Wanchies, it's a significant, <laughs> what? It's a significant, uh, it's a, or, or a very impressive facility. It is uh, a state facility that is or represents, well, first the state of North Carolina, but I believe a consortium of five universities, three of which I remembered were NC State, UNC, Chapel Hill, and Greenville, I think, or East Carolina University. East Carolina University, if memory serves me, is the administrative, serves as the administrative entity for that consortium that's of that state, of that state structure. And uh, some of the things that I left with, and I'll probably ask, uh, uh, Dan or Ike to, to jump in here and help me is some of the things that I found particularly interesting is there's a tremendous amount of work that has been done by East Carolina University graduate students specific to the historical boats of Currituck County, hunting boats and fishing boats, uh, pictures, history, uh, just a tremendous amount of work. And the reason that this, I found this of particular interest is, of course, as I spoke to earlier, and as many of you will know, the Wellhead Preservation Trust, along with the county, is significantly now involved in, in the completion of the restoration boat 
program that Wellhead has been undertaking for, for some years and the construction of a facility to, for which the purposes would be to display and interpret them additionally with with a eye to some of the mainland historical uh, history relative to the duck hunting clubs and stuff that were a mainstay of this county's history and indeed a lot of the locals their their livelihood and lives here they are a wealth of information in that area their technology i think uh dan and ike would agree with me is top notch and cutting edge they have 3d 360 3d technology that can actually immerse you when you're standing there underwater looking at some of the uh I was going to say CAD restorations, but I think it's even more advanced than that of the monitor and some of the boats and the shipwrecks that are in this. That, that this coast is is a treasure trove of, of history of sunken ships. Uh, I know I dove on the U-85. That was, uh, they've done a significant, that was a German U-boat that was sunk during World War II. And anyway, some of the other i found information that was of particular interest i think going forward not only to this region but to this county is they've done a lot of research they're geologists and marine uh historians uh i think as well as with in conjunction with the army uh, corps of engineers a significant amount of study relative to beach erosion and projections of where most likely there will be significant beach erosion in the future based on what has happened in the past. Also incorporated in that are certain models that look to the future relative to warming of the temperature and, 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 and such changes. They also have an on-staff economist who has done just recently a position paper relative to a speech that he has done uh, and is either has presented or is in the process of presenting in the next month or so about the efficacy financially and otherwise of beach restoration, nourishment, and those sorts of things. And he spoke to that to some length, and as most college professors, I probably left after listening to one, I left with more questions than I had answers, but nevertheless, they were very, I thought, good questions. I'm sure there was more. Uh, could I, out of turn, ask, since we're on that subject, ask either Dan or Ike to add, because I'm sure I missed some of the stuff. It was very informative. There is a force multiplication that will, that's the term I use for, will use a lot of the research and study that they have done to assist us with what we are doing relative to our boat restoration program, as I spoke to Dan, Ike, can there was a lot more. Is there anything else that stuck out to you that would be cons of significance and importance to us as a county? The, um, the, I think there are a couple things. They, they have some wonderful programs where they're working with our high school and um, uh, uh, middle schools on how to uh, take science and, and a hand-on approach and they have various different workshops where our high schools can go down to and participate. Uh, they have several efforts underway to uh, look at some very inter interesting ways to extract energy from our oceans, uh, whether it's wave research, whether it is uh, they've got a project going on looking at the Gulf current uh, to extract energy from that. Uh, they work with communities to look at uh, how to build and maintain sustainable communities in a fragile economic or, or, or ecology of, as the Outer Banks. Uh, to that, that, I think they actually have some resources that we might be able to work with. Uh, they're looking at how to extract electricity from the, the process of salt water being in close proximity to fresh water. In fact, that was a project they, speak, they spoke directly to us that they'd like to undertake in Currituck. Uh, with the, the proximity, the close up proximity of the sound uh, to the ocean up in the Kerala area uh, to see if, if, if there's a, some kind of chemical interplay that could potentially create electricity. Um, uh, they have the public policy, as Commissioner Griggs talked about, it, that they could help us work through uh, various different topics. One that's, that's near and dear to the Outer Banks is talking about the best way to maintain and stabilize 
uh, the, the, the beach strand. And so I think we have a very valuable resource right here in our backyard, and it was uh, nice to see the staff go down. I think we made some good connections, and, and uh, hopefully we can bring some of that uh, uh, research up into the Kurtek area. If I could just add one thing that Dan spoke to about deriving energy from the at first we were talking about waves and they talked about that but the Gulf Stream and they they were indicating their scientists there that were doing the reach research said that the wave action was not necessarily the future or the source for getting energy due I think to the shallowness of the continental shelf and but then he did go on to speak to the Gulf Stream, and we're one of two points, North Carolina, Currituck County, the Outer Banks, we're one of two points on the East Coast that's close enough to the Gulf Stream, the other being in Florida, one of two points on the East Coast but with the proximity to the Gulf Stream is such that the potential is there to tap it. Now, to give you an idea of what the potential energy is in the Gulf Stream, they used the example, if you took all of the world's rivers, not just North America, but the entirety of the world's rivers, and multiplied them by a factor, I believe, of 45, that would be what the Gulf Stream represents. Of all the world's rivers times 45, and that's what's out there flowing by us. And, of course, the concept is very, very complicated, and I didn't, wouldn't even pretend to understand it, and it's still in the making, is a way to house that or, or to turbines and to capture that because the Gulf Stream's been running for as long as any of, well, history. So that's kind of exciting. And if I remember correctly, they talked that it may be sort of kind of 10 years maybe where it could come to fruition, and that would be significant but in any event uh sorry the rest of you guys couldn't have made it but it was it was enthralling to me and with that that'll be it mr idlett uh I, I, like everyone or said earlier thank the lord the storm went east of us and and heading on north and we didn't uh feel any of the or much of the impacts of it we did feel some impacts uh, i got a call this morning it's pretty significant flooding in uh, ocean sands uh, there's places where there's uh, 14 to 16 inches of water standing uh, staff has been down and done some evaluation county manager and staff has been working trying to figure out ways to to help uh, of course we're under all kinds of uh, regulations on whether you can pump or can't pump and that type of stuff so anyhow I've just asked staff if there's anything that we can do let's please do it uh, from a county perspective to help them out uh, the damage reports up on the North Beach area dunes have took a beating big time uh, don't know of any property damage haven't heard of any just there's a lot of cut off dunes a lot of loss of dunes uh, a lot of water standing and roads, that type of thing. But uh, other than that, from what I've heard today, that's the most significant stuff. Uh, I suppose you had a guess. Knights Island fared well. Uh, just a lot of rainwater. There's some flooding issues over there. I, uh, a lady called me today, and, and I rode down and looked at it. The, the road was completely flooded. <clears throat> Ditches on each side of it were dry and just... In, in areas to where it's blocked up so I've made a call to DOT and she has as well and if I don't get any help I'll get with the manager and see if we can get some other help there to to help straighten that out thank you mr. payment a uh, couple things first of all uh, the storm related for years we've always heard if if the Outer Banks ever took a direct hit from a major hurricane you know, what kind of economic impact would that have on the county? Um, and about a week ago, last Monday, we saw a lot of models that were going to bring that scenario true to Kerala. And we would have seen what it would have, what devastation we would have had with our economic um, success we've had in the Outer Banks. 
That being said, that's the more that we as a county, the community, the Board of Commissioners, everyone have got to keep pushing for the economic development on the mainland for looking for the businesses to here to help that. I mean, we dodged a bullet, we did, but um, they were getting close all the time. And Kerala has really um, generated a lot of revenue for the county, um, but it's not going to take much um, to, to stop that if we get that impact like we, we were on course to get. Um, the second item is on, uh, heard a lot about fires. Well, I, I'm in the Lower Kirtuck Fire Department, and we've discussed how many fire, structural fires and calls we've had this year in the past that seem to have increased all over the county. Uh, more than usual, and that just goes to emphasize that I want to reach out to the community again. Don't forget, this is a volunteer organization that we have in the county. Um, th yeah, that that we, you know, the more help we can get, the more apparatuses we can bring out to Mr. Beaumont's place there. <laughs> 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 but it takes individuals that can uh, can show up. Um, any time of day, night, during dinner, um, volunteers are always needed. I told them I would always um, make this comment about contacting your volunteer fire departments and getting involved any way you can. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gilbert? Um, the same thing. I want to echo with um, what Mr. Payment and Mr. Beaumont said on our fire department. Um, they have done a tremendous job, and not only do they need volunteers, but if, if you have some financial backing that you can contribute to your local fire department when they do fundraisers, um, things like that, it, it, every dollar helps. So if you can contribute, you know, just a few dollars, um, every, those dollars will be stretched. Um, secondly, um, as we were preparing for the storm, I want to commend Mary Beth Noons. Um, she is in the audience tonight, and I want to um, I think I see her back there. Um, congratulate her and her team for all that you all did um, in, in preparation for the storm. It was advantageous for us to have the text messages that we've, we've gotten um, with the county manager um, and, and his staff as far as getting those notifications to us as commissioners to keep us abreast of what was going on. So I just want to reach out and really um, thank those staff members, um, and the, the email blast, things like that. Um, just thank you very, very much because it was a job well done, um, and you, you all deserve a, a big pat on your back. Um, second, I am wearing pink tonight, even though um, I'm, I'm not dressed in a suit tonight. Um, but I want to just remind everybody that October is Breast, Care, Breast Awareness, Cancer Awareness Month, um, and it's a good time for everybody to um, be reminded that they need to get preventatives done. Um, if you get your preventative appointments taken care of, that can take care of a lot of um, long drawn out illnesses that can come. Um, we each one of us have been touched by cancer in our lives in some form or fashion. So um, just remember those folks um, and, and just support the Cancer Awareness Month. Mr. Chairman, can I add one thing? Mr. Payment reminded me of something. As we talk about the fire departments, uh, I sat down and met again with, I was invited to come out with the Knott's Island Volunteer Fire Department. They are in, they're in distress big time. And uh, their membership, they have like eight people that can respond is what they have. And this, the community is aware there's loads of concern. And I went out the other night, they asked me to come out and talk about alternatives. Uh, the county manager and myself and Chief Melton met, met with them, not the community, but met with the fire organization and uh, the fire chief especially a couple months ago. Uh, Mr. Hall was there as well, Commissioner Hall was there, and Mr. Woody. And uh, <clears throat> we, we tried to come up with some stopgap measures of uh, a couple want well one wants to enhance their ems uh people that were there make sure they were trained firefighters as part of that staff that was there same thing we've done in the past there have been some issues with uh response times in the mutual aid agreement with the city of virginia beach turnout time there had been an issue about uh, different levels having to approve the turnout to to go respond there. So we asked them to go and meet with the city of Virginia Beach and, and get that straightened out. Uh, Mr. Scanlon has made me aware that that meeting did take place and I, I, I have been told that those issues have been taken care of. I asked Mr. Scanlon to please uh, ask Chief Melton to prepare a report to us, or to me especially since it's my district, so I can see just what they did discuss and what they did decide. I'm waiting on that. Uh, 
but the, the, the department itself is, is in a very bad way. Uh, uh, there was, it was the community, like I say, turned out the other night. There was a lot of different people there talking about trying to figure out ways to enhance the, the volunteers and get people involved. But you, you only have so many people there. And it's, you know, the, the, the membership or the, the, the number of people on the island is just, you can only get so many volunteers with the people that live there. So I don't know where it's going to go. Don't have a clue. Uh, we're, 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 we'll, we'll keep going. And I told them that the first deal certainly had to be to try to enhance the volunteer system and make it viable again. And if that didn't work, well, then we'd have to go to plan B and look at what other alternatives we had. So I just wanted to make you aware of it. So that's where it's at. Thank you. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, right. if I could just one more echo on that. Folks, if you want to become part of these fire departments, the training is at no cost to you. The gear is not any cost to you. If you want to be part of an organization that helps people and you can learn, and again, no cost to you, come on out and at least visit these fire departments and see what they have there and talk to these folks. Be part of a team. Be part of a family. Again, you don't have to come in here with any pre-training or anything else. We'll take care of that. Am I correct, Mr. Payment? That, that's correct. All the fire departments, they, they provide the training. They get you the essentials, the equipment, the gear. Um, if you've got the willing to do it, they'll take you or they'll train you as far as you'd like to go. All right. To, in addition to what I was going to say, to piggyback off of that, we have talked several times about a volunteer coordinator for the fire departments that would coordinate and standardize training centralized training, make sure there's sufficient training, and keep up with the records of training. And I've talked with different members of different fire departments. They see some benefits to that. But in addition to that, the county manager and I have been talking with uh, COA about um, analyzing exactly what their offerings are over here and how we can better enhance some of the opportunities for training. Uh, from COA so that a lot of our firefighters and, and actually law enforcement don't have to go to Wilson or wherever they have to go for all this training. Yeah, Hatteras and different areas. So we have talked about that and, and I think it would be apropos to have another discussion about the volunteer coordinator and this board needs to make a decision. Do we want somebody that takes some of that burden off the fire departments? that goes out and recruits, make sure the volunteers have their hours and, and coordinate the training or not. But I think we're at the point we need to have a serious conversation about that. And unless the board objects, I'd like to ask the staff to prepare that conversation. Mr. Chow, I would agree with that because we're also seeing a lot of high school graduates starting getting involved too. So as far as making contact in the school systems, um, is a good you know, good plan for that That's, as well. I'm glad you brought that up because we also had conversations with the who just left superintendent, Miss um, Osmond. Osmond. Yeah, Osmond, um, about doing a a course through the high schools to try to get these young people involved, to get them community oriented, and thinking about volunteering. So when they reach of age, they'll have some training, and I believe they're all on board with doing that. And I believe Mr. Scanlon might can give a little more detail on that, maybe. Uh, well, they are on board with it. I think they're looking, <clears throat> excuse me, to get the, <clears throat> the the state approvals to develop that curriculum. And I believe they were talking about uh, next year being able to uh, consider having a block that would, uh, a junior firefighter or, or something through the school program. But th they are moving forward with that. Mr. Uh, Chairman. And, and, oh, I'm sorry. And, yeah. and uh, Chief Melton has presented to me a, a plan uh, to restructure in such a fashion that he could uh, end up with a position that would be tasked with the volunteer coordinate. So I'll be putting that together and presenting that to you. But the, the chief has actually uh, already prepared that and presented that to me. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. the fire uh, advisory board met last week, and that was one of the topics that we discussed at the fire board. So that is, that's what led to, I think, Mr. Scanlon being provided that so that that's coming back mr yes, chairman sir. as i see it there's there's two main issues two big time issues that this coordinator that we're talking about is can solve and i've been saying it for two three years and you know i have and and 
it, the, the, the training piece of it is a tremendous burden on these individual fire departments, yeah. each and every one of them. They can talk about, they can get it in-house and this and that and other, but they can't get it all in-house. They're, you know, either that, if they do, they've got a, a whole bunch of people they've got to train. COA has got to have 10 people to bring a certified instructor over here to teach a class. If you have less than that, they don't teach the class because they don't get paid and, and they can't, they just can't put it on. And, and it, it's, it's a tremendous burden there. And for people getting off work and then driving all the way to COA to, to go to school, I mean, you're talking to get someone certified in, in the, in the, in the quote unquote, uh, uh, Pro board certification process, Lord have mercy. From a volunteer standpoint, it would take them two years probably to get there. And, and so, and you, you, I'm sorry. You you just someone who just would handle that training and coordinate that training for everyone. And then the other piece of it is the recruitment piece of it. Be active out into communities, into schools, and doing the recruitment. That's, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a job that will be well worth every dollar we spend on it. Well, I, I do. I can verify Mr. Scanlon is having regular conversations with Dr. Dietermeyer about these very issues that we're discussing tonight, and I think they're working towards resolution. And the other thing, uh, Commissioner Eilert, when when we were on the fire EMS board back in the day, one of the things that that training coordinator brings to the table is we actually lose points for not being able to track all of the training that's going on. And so when we looked at what affects our ISO rating and, the, and what it costs to improve your ISO rating, that training coordinator, we identified at the time that that was probably one of the cheapest ways to improve our ISO rating that's that right. we possibly come up with. That's right. I forgot Mr. Beaumont was on the fire advisory board back then. What's that been three years ago? Three or four years ago. Back in the day. When it was first brought up. <laughs> and I would and say, firemen were fine. I will say one, one other thing. In my discussions with the fire chiefs and different ones in the fire department, there is a, a common theme that several of them have brought to me as well, is they would like to know what the level of service is the county would ask for them in their contract so that they're not necessarily continuing to chase ISO ratings and, and different things. At the county, I don't know how to do it, but we need to develop a level of services as a minimum for these contracts for the fire departments so that they know exactly what they need to do from a training, equipment, and, and that's, manpower. That's, that's one of the things that was laid out in the assessment that we yep. asked to have done. That is, the, that is step one. That's one of the most important pieces to determining what our fire service is going to look like in Great Tuck County the level of service, and then they develop a standard cover which will meet the level of service. That's how it's done. That's what you got to do. And this, the level of service is contingent upon the, the, the wishes and the wants and the costs of the community and the people in the community. What, what is their expectations from a fire department? Level of service can be anything from a 20-minute response time 90% of the time to for a paid department in a... In a, in a in a uh, 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 urban area, it could be seven-minute response time, 100% of the time. I mean, that's that's your level of service. That, the expectations on how you're going to get people there, what type of equipment is going to be a part of that response team, and and it, that, that's certainly something that's got to be laid out and, and determined. Well, we need to uh, maybe we need to have a work session soon, Mr. Scanlon, to kind of pull all this together because the volunteer fire department saved the citizens of Curry Tuck multiple millions of dollars in the budget every year. And if we can spend a few dollars to help make them, keep them viable and support them, I think it's well worth their effort and, and time spending to put that together to help. Stop and look at it like this, Mr. Chairman. Probably costs us overall about $3 million a year for fire services. If we went to a full paid fire service in Curry Tuck County, it would it'd be hitting on $15 million. That's correct. <clears throat> All right. Well, Mr. And Chairman, I've requested from the manager that he go ahead and set up a meeting with Chief Melton with us uh, as a commissioner. So I'd like to get that, get that in place as soon as possible. When you're prepared to bring us something. And the last thing, so we'll move on that. The last thing, as I see Ms. Noons is uh, in the audience, I was up here Thursday observing the staff, uh, Sheriff's Department, Chief Melton, uh, the Forest Service, um, who am I 
leaving out Mr. Scanlon. Uh -oh. um, is public, multiple public works, NCDOT. public works, um, NCDOT. There was multiple people up here as they were preparing for what could have been a bad situation, and the professionalism, the um, demarcation of who was responsible for what and when, and communicating the, amongst the different ones was very well coordinated, very professional. And I have no doubts had we had a storm, while we could not have done anything about the damage, but the after um, math of what the county would be responsible for in coordination with FEMA, the state, local resources would have been done in a very professional and proficient manner. And I do want to thank the staff, the ones that are present, as well as the ones who, who are not here tonight for their preparation. They go through drills, they plan, they practice. And, but when something happens, you can't plan for every contingency, but I feel fully confident they would have taken care of their job and what they were responsible for. So I don't want to add that. And with that, Mr. Scanlon, do you have anything? Yes, sir. First of all, I thank you for your comments, and I certainly echo the, uh, your sentiments towards the staff. We, we have a, a, a very dedicated and uh, uh, committed staff, and uh, as was mentioned, uh, I believe last Wednesday, they were predicting a, strike, uh, a hit on Corolla with the eye going right over Kurtzak County. So uh, the staff does have to drop their day-to-day -day activities, and they all assume a different role and responsibility in emergency management, and so I, I greatly appreciate uh, the effort that they transitioned into that role. And, and we were very fortunate that the storm uh, did turn and, and go out to sea. But uh, even though it did, the county staff is still engaged in this effort. Um, we did have, although we were very blessed, uh, some property owners have experienced some damage. Uh, I encourage them to contact the, the building inspections department. Permits may be required. Uh, that staff is working on efforts to expedite any permit that might be needed because of storm damage. Um, if you have a, a lot of what we're seeing is perhaps docks, piers, or, or, or walkways into the, uh, the sounds or the, the, the ocean. Um, if you have those, as long as it was a step, a board, basically a horizontal structure, uh, you could put that back on without a permit. But if it was anything to do with the handrail or structural, uh, you will need to have a permit. And we are looking, again, to expedite those permits. Uh, we are working with CAMA. CAMA currently has a prohibition on any beach pushes, and so we've actually had several communities ask us about uh, how to start moving back to establishing the dune line, and we're working on that effort, although right now there is a moratorium on that. Uh, there is also, uh, for the most part, uh, the county got through the high water, although we had some localized flooding. Most of that seemed to have released yesterday and today, although the Ocean Sands community uh, does have a, a significant amount of standing water mainly around where the lake is, although there's other areas in Ocean Sands. Uh, we've had staff up there all afternoon. Uh, there is a little bit of misnomer. Uh, there is a, a, a public belief uh, that once it reached 14 inches, we are allowed to pump, and that's a county call. Uh, that's not literally what the, the, the policy requires. Um, 14 inch is just a, 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 a benchmark. Uh, we actually have to find uh, that there is an eminent uh, public health and safety danger in place before we can even contemplate pumping. Uh, we have been working through that, trying to get that declaration, and we have not been successful. Uh, we're continuing to work on that. This afternoon, we put another uh, proposal in front of the state under the public health, um, and that has not been successful so far. So at this point in time, uh, we have not been authorized to move forward with pumping, but it's an effort that we are still moving forward on. Um, but I just encourage anybody that probably had some property damage uh, to contact the building inspection department because permits may be required. Is that it? Yes, sir. Thank you. This time I'm going to move the public comment. We have uh, Miss Mary Etheridge signed up, and we'll open the public comment. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Etheridge, and I live at 846 Shawbar Road. Today I'm going to do something that I keep telling myself not to do. I promised myself, no matter how upset I got with the county, that I needed to stick to what the county did to me, putting a junkyard in my backyard and costing me thousands of dollars when everyone told the commissioners that it was wrong. But sometimes we just need to speak up. A few weeks ago, 
I was going south on Cary Tuck Highway, and I cannot believe our county is allowing DOT signs to be flashing 34 minutes, 38 minutes to Kitty Hawk. Now, I can see this if traffic is backed up or during a storm, but in September, folks, all we hear at these meetings is how much we are pushing tourism, spending money on bathrooms at the colored school, spending money on the horse farm, spending, spending, spending. But you commissioners are allowing a sign telling tourists in just 34 minutes, you will be enjoying Dare County and spending your money there. Are you kidding me? We are spending thousands of dollars on the horse farm. We are spending thousands of dollars to build a bathroom. And you're not up in arms over DOT telling tourists, just you wait. It's only 34 minutes until beautiful Dare County. Maybe some of our tourist dollars would be well spent telling visitors what they could be enjoying during that 34-minute drive. And speaking of that drive, whatever happened to improving our corridor? And speaking of improvements, in a few months, we will be co conducting elections in North Carolina. It's a presidential election, plus state offices, local offices, and even some of you are up for re-election. So you can be assured that it will be a very large turnout here in Curry Tuck County. Of the people who vote, around one-third vote early, and that number is growing yearly. For Curry Tuck County, we're talking about between three and 4,000 citizens of the county going through the door of the election board office during each of the elections, the primary and the general elections. I am sure no other office in the county sees this many visitors a year. I'm sure most of you go to the election board office to file for office or vote and never think about anything election related unless it relates to you. Well, the other day, I did stop by the election board office, and it is really in need of improvement. But I don't know how much improvement can be done to a trailer or how you can make it larger since they are running out of room. But I can honestly say it is one of the worst-looking offices in this county that serves more citizens of the county. So, commissioners, maybe you need to look at the election board office and see if you're as proud of the building serving the voters of Curry Tuck as you are the animal shelter. And this is nothing against the animal shelter, but are you kidding me? A multi-million dollar building serving the animals and serving the citizens of Curry Tuck County a trailer? Thank you. Thank you. We need a motion to recess the Curry Tuck County Board of Commissioners and reconvene as the Tourism Development Authority. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Oppose. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Scanlon, I believe Ms. Kugler is here. And by the way, Ms. Kugler, you also were in that uh, emergency management meeting. I didn't mean to slight you. Yes, sir, you have uh, two budget amendments for uh, your consideration tonight, both dealing with uh, occupancy tax. Uh, the first one uh, that you have actually has two distinct pieces to it. Uh, one of those is uh, at a previous Board of Commissioners meeting, the Board of Commissioners authorized those funds that had been previously budgeted towards the Wellhead Trust with a specific restriction. Uh, all that money could be put together and go to the boat building program. Um, when we had transitioned the oversight of the project back into the county, uh, that budget was actually wiped out. And so in the budget amendment, the first one you have, you see reestablishing the 62853 That was the amount of money out of the 800000 in that fiscal year that went to the boat program. It's being reestablished so that it can be committed to the boat program. The second piece of that is the 29588 The in a settlement agreement agreement from previous years, 
uh, Outer Banks Conservationist who operates the lighthouse has to make a financial payment to Wellhead Trust annually for their use of public assets, which is predominantly they use the bathrooms there at the Wellhead Club uh, or uh, on the property at Heritage Park. And so they have to make a financial contribution to that. And what you're seeing in this budget amendment is now that the county staff and we are overseeing the operation of Heritage Park, that money is being transferred from the trust into the county so the county can undertake that work. Uh, and I believe we're, we're doing some uh, repairs to the gazebo roof. We're doing some repairs to the bulkhead um, and to the, the, um, uh, the guardhouse. And so that's the 29000 is actually money being transferred into the county so that we can undertake that work. Uh, the second budget amendment that you have in there is unfortunately the air conditioning system at the visitor center. I guess, thankfully, at the end of the season, it decided to die out on us, but uh, it has died. Um, and we are looking to uh, appropriate monies to replace the air conditioning unit in the visitor center in Kerala. And I'll be happy to answer any specific questions you might have about either one of those budget amendments. I have one. Yes, sir. Two, yeah. If I could, you spoke to the 29,000, roughly 29,000 that's coming from the OBC settlement, which was a court ordered settlement. What was that almost 10 years ago? Yeah. Roughly. I mean, it, yes, it was roughly. a while back. And just for clarification purposes, that OBC settlement money, the 29,000 that you spoke to now tonight was money that has always been over dependency of or the issuance of that OBC settlement directed towards the maintenance, as you said, of the facilities out there on wellhead property. So there has this budget amendment changes really nothing except the mode of, I guess it would be housekeeping be a general housekeeping term or, or mode of how it's transferred. Well, the money never came directly to the county, and the county never undertook the work directly. The money always transferred to the trust, and the trust did the work, and therefore it was never budgeted at the county level. And so now that the county is overseeing the operation and maintenance of the property, uh, we need to receipt that money in. And so that's what you see. You see a revenue source and a, and a corresponding um, expenditure. At the risk of needlessly complicating the issue, I guess, the county has always owned the wellhead property and has always maintained it through the $800,000 uh, appropriation that the county has provided the wellhead. So, and that's this money was utilized for that as a result of the OBC settlements, my understanding. So it's just a matter of how it's being, not what it's being applied on, but how it's being applied. Correct. Okay. I just wanted there's no big revelations or changes relative to that yeah, no changes or deviation from what the settlement agreement required stipulation on how that money can be spent and that's the point I, that's the point I was trying to make all right any other questions <clears throat> Chairman, I just have a one you, you talking about the AC unit in the visitor center is yes. that a shared unit with the ABC store or is it separate units I'm gonna have to I, I, I'm not familiar enough with that system to know if it's a standalone system or not well, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm bringing it up, if it's a shared system, well, they should be responsible and for half of it, shouldn't I, they? I don't believe it's a shared system, but I, I, I don't know that to be a I fact. I don't know. I just brought it up. I don't know that either. I did ask that question. We are assuming that it, it's two separate units, but I can't find yeah. that out. It, it, I'm sorry. Is that a, about the ABC? You say shared with a... I just asked, did they I, share one unit for the I, whole building? I, I, I don't believe they do, but I don't know that to be a fact. Well, doesn't that office, doesn't the ABC share, doesn't they pay the county rent for that building? They, they pay rent for the facility, yes. They pay rent for the facility, so okay. I don't know. But we won't double charge them, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm on the ABC board, so I don't no, want to go back and tell I them I just want to get that they got to pay for right. something they're already paying for. <laughs> Gene Gregory wouldn't like that. <laughs> Sales, sales were up. The, the ABC store has a, a newer unit in it. Okay. All right. Any further questions? Their own unit. Hearing none, we need a motion. So moved. I have a motion for approval. Second. I'll second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. I need a motion to adjourn the Tourism Development Authority and reconvene the Curry Tuck County Commissioner's meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 And before we have a motion to adjourn, I did not ask if uh, I apologize to anyone in the audience that wishes to speak. I did not ask if there's anyone else that wishes to speak in a public comment. If there is, I certainly will recognize you at this time. Hearing none, I will properly close the public comment and make a motion to adjourn the meeting. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed.